Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar, Prevention Techniques and Best Practices to Dodge Network Congestion. I'm Stacey Jambura, the Event Marketing Coordinator here at Live Action and your moderator for today. And today I'm joined by Mike Aragon, who's a sales engineer here at Live Action, and he will be running through a demonstration regarding some of the issues that network teams are facing when troubleshooting their network performance issues. During our presentation today, if you do have any questions that come up, go ahead and enter those into the chat box, and we will address those during our question and answer session at the end of our demonstration here. So with that, I will hand you over to Mike, and he'll begin our demonstration and our discussion. Thank you, Stacy. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Aragon. I'm a systems engineer with Live Action, and today's webinar is going to cover operations and troubleshooting workflows within the Live Action solution. How is Live Action different than other solutions? Live Action's multi telemetry based next generation solution provides a fundamentally new approach to network performance management and bringing together key information elements from multiple data sources, such as SNMP, NetFlow, Packet. APIs and other proprietary information to provide visibility in any segment of your network. You know, we do a lot of the basic up down bandwidth reporting via SNMP. We can collect NetFlow, NetFlow from effectively any uh, IP fix uh, device um, that can send IP fix to LiveNX. Um, I think we're best in class at NetFlow reporting and analytics. I've not seen anyone do that better. Packet data with our live wire packet capture solution. We're able to, through a, an appliance or a virtual appliance or a virtual appliance in the cloud, take raw packet data and convert it to a very rich proprietary enhanced IP fix flow for LiveNX consumption. So that gives you what you would normally get in your advanced voice and video flow, but it, with the new metrics, things like MOS score or from a TCP perspective, you'll be able to actually see, you know, uh, connection refused, connection lost, low window, zero window. So getting, you know, visibility into the TCP window via NetFlow is really cool. Um, we leverage APIs to enhance our data set. So we're, we're actually, uh, for example, we can connect to the Cisco SD-WAN uh, vManage API to pull down uh, data to provide reports and analysis workflows on, you know, the tunnel health, uh, SLA classes, and so forth. Um, we can provide this visibility in any segment. Um, we were traditionally very WAN focused, but today we're a lot more focused on any segment because with live wire technology, we can we can basically find those blind spots and give you really good flow data. In addition to our packet analysis workflow. Don't want to beat you guys to death with slides, but I just want to give you a quick overview of what components we're working with and how the solution works. Um, there's two different ways to interrogate the tool. One of them is with a thick client that you would install on your Mac or PC, and this would connect to the primary server. There's also a, a web-based or clientless uh, approach. We call it the operations console that would connect to the server and allow you to run through all the same workflows. Um, the concept of nodes allows us to scale out horizontally as needed. Um, we can scale out for, you know, geographic partitioning or maybe have a security zone that you need to have isolated data collection in, or just generally for scale. So if we've exceeded the capacity of a single uh, server VM, we can add capacity by adding nodes. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, hopefully everyone can see my Chrome browser here. So this is the operations console. This is the web-based front end, so you don't need a client to access it. When you first log into the LiveNX system, you're gonna get presented to this overview page. The purpose of this page is to provide situational awareness as to what's going on in your network at this very moment. So we've broken things down by sites, devices, interfaces, and of course, alerts. There's a concept of status that drives the color of these different elements, whether it's a site, device interface, et cetera. 
it's all driven by our alerting framework. So what turns a device red is up to you. You know, you can decide whether it's a, you know, device memory, uh, interface drops, interface reachability, you know, all the way down to performance data that can drive status. So, you know, application response time can drive, you know, the status of an application or device or site. So the idea is that you can quickly navigate to issues. So I, I've got a, a trouble ticket open for a user at, at the uh, Austin location. So I'm going to go ahead and drill into this site and take a closer look at what's going on here. The site pages, uh, we call these entity pages or landing pages. These contain a lot of information about the site, including you know, some details that could be populated, such as siders. Um, we can tag sites, phone numbers. Uh, can pop, plot these sites on a map, so there's geo coordinates, but we give some, you know, kind of high level information that's helpful when you're just taking a quick look at the site. You know, we can see service provider bandwidth uh, bi-directionally, we can see applications bi-directionally, uh, we can look at what DSCP values, you know, traffic is coming in and leaving as, you know, here we can see best effort uh, 46 and 48 and top conversation so you can actually see you know what is actually using that inbound and outbound bandwidth that we were looking at in that first graph so we can see interfaces um, interfaces have their own landing pages as well um, if we click on an individual interface we can get detail about that interfaces uh, bandwidth we can look at its provisional details, whether it's WAN or not, whether it has a service provider assigned, et cetera. We can look at the interface bandwidth. This is raw SNMP data. If there's any interface errors, we would see them. We can actually see the utilization. So based on provision capacity, we'll, we'll be able to trigger uh, utilization-based threshold events. Um, we can look at QoS class drops. Actually, you can see right here, we've got class drops on the voice class, this particular site. And of course, you can still see the some of the other information like DSCP and top conversations, et cetera. Um, we do provide a lot of different availability data points for interfaces, uh, devices, and sites um, based on SNMP reachability. So when you get that annoying tap on the shoulder, you need to provide those availability numbers. We have some great reports for you, as well as alerts. Um, these are alerts that are specific to this interface. So I'm going to back up a minute, and I'm going to go back to this site Austin and another key information element is the actual WAN application performance that we can get from this system so if I click on the WAN applications tab I can see the applications that are associated to this site and I have these top of column filters that I can use to sort uh, based on performance or data rates and so forth um, I'm going to sort by voice video performance since I know I had a complaint for a voice video issue and I can see that this voice application um, is is in critical status and I can even see the reason for the status and that's based on the jitters if I click on this VoIP application this is going to take me to the application landing page for the site again we're looking at this data for the Austin site you can see here uh, the critical nature of this application is due to the jitter. And of course we have supporting data. We can see the conversations that are driving this as well as a little modal over here on the right that can give some useful directionality, uh, clues to where the problem is actually happening. You can see I can actually move these shapes around and I can see that you know this issue appears to be coming in from this MPLS service provider. So if I click this link, I can actually isolate and focus on specific issues. In this case, I wanna look at jitter. And if I click again, now I get details about that particular leg of the conversation and I can quickly go to a path view. Now the path view is one of the coolest features in the tool, in my opinion. It really saves a lot of time when we're doing troubleshooting because you know, and traditionally you're looking at a whole string of devices in a path, right? We can see in this case, we've got a, an MPLS router and another service provider connection. We have got another router in, in at the Austin site. But what's important here is we can actually um, 
see performance metrics on a per hop basis. So that gives us the ability to kind of isolate and narrow down where you know trouble exists based on metrics on a per site basis or per hop basis. And here we can see we've actually got a, a live wire packet engine in the, in the workflow. And this is that workflow optimization I was talking about earlier where we can actually cross launch into the live wire packet engine I'm going to call this search uh, VoIP trouble. And you can see it's passing along the five tuple information for the conversation. So source destination IP, source destination ports and protocol. And I have the option to select various different analysis uh, for looking at this data. For now, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to leave everything turned on. So I'm going to click start. And now we're going to churn through these packets and see what else we can find here. So right off the bat, whenever we load a, a, a search, we're searching packet files. So we're going to populate some basic information like utilization. We'll show what applications or application ca categories exist. We're looking at one conversation here, so I don't expect a lot of depth to this, but we do get um, voice and video analysis. So we get call quality distribution and for some reason, this one is showing green as in good, um, but this is uh, industry standard. So this is all uh, telcomy based metrics. You know, we'll get details about the call quality by codec. We can see the call volume by codec and we can actually see how much traffic that particular or how much uh, bandwidth that particular call is utilizing. Now, this was a single stream of a single conversation in a demo workflow. What I'd like to do is show uh, some more data that has a little bit more depth to it. Um, one really nice feature about this tool is it gives you the ability to upload packet files from wherever you're at on your network. So you don't have to have Wireshark or your protocol analyzer installed locally. You know, you can actually just browse to one of your engines and upload files and do the same type of analysis. So um, I've uploaded a workshop file here that has some interesting data in it. I'm going to go ahead and run a quick forensic search on this file. And uh, we'll just leave it called live action workshop for the time being. And I'm going to leave all the analysis on again. So I'm going to click start. We're going to run this forensic search. And now you're going to see the power of this, this tool. Um, we can really um, extrapolate a lot of good information from a single packet trace. So again, network utilization, we can see protocols. When we go to the applications dashboard, we can see you know, top applications based on category. We can see bytes. We can actually see how much uh, traffic an individual application is utilizing. The voice video dashboard is really cool because it gives that call quality distribution. But if you have uh, multiple calls within your packet trace, then you can actually uh, you see more than the one that we saw earlier. You know, here we have, you know, 69% of our calls are good, but we do have some bad calls mixed in here. And we see that same distribution. And you know, we can see the quality by codec. You know, we can see the volume. Um, this is a MOS score over time. But not only do you get this, you know, high level summary, you can look at individual calls. So we can search calls by a lot of different criteria, including, you know, basic information you would get out of the call setup, such as two, you know, what number the call, what call ed party was, um, call ID if you have it, maybe you're working with your, your uh, service provider and you have a specific call ID you wanna pull packets for. Um, you can look at MOS score or who the call came in from. And you can see here, we have a lot of good information. We can populate the codec, um, you can see how many packets. You can actually see the duration of the call and the actual end cost. You know, did the call clear correctly, or was there some sort of an error? If you click on one of these calls, it brings up this tray, uh, our voice video visualizer, and this gives us the ability to decouple, you know, signaling and media paths. So we can see the SIP conversation here. You know, we can see the setup, 100 trying, 180 ringing. We get the 200 OK with an SDP, and we act that, and we start sending uh, RTP media. On the RTP tab up here on the top right, we can actually get into the 
uh, RTP stream and populate data points over time. So you can see the jitter in milliseconds over time. And you can also see the quality over time. So we have a, a MOS score here. So really detailed information about an individual call. Now, voice and video alone, um, one of my favorite parts of the, the dashboard features is Compass. Compass gives us a really detailed breakdown of packet data. And we can actually zoom in to a 10 millisecond view and you can get very granular in searching and looking at your packet data. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and zoom out here and reset the view so we can see everything. But what's interesting is we can sort by response time. So if you're looking at a packet trace and you're trying to find the applications that are performing poorly, right? We're gonna be able to sort each flow or each conversation by response time. And you can see right away, this first conversation has a 25 second response time. Um, to go even further, we can actually isolate and save those particular packets in a search and isolate them, download them, send them to your, uh, your server admin and say, here's proof of the issue that, you're, that we're, we've been working on all this time where everyone's blaming the network. Um, Two-way latency is another really cool view in Compass because it gives you network latency versus app latency. And again, that same ability to isolate a specific conversation, but you know, being able to sort based on application latency is huge. And you can find that, that troublesome conversation and then go grab those packets. And that process is really simple. I can select related. And once I have selected all the packets, I can actually click open selected packets. This is gonna prompt me for a new forensic search. And I can just call this bad application delay. And I'm gonna save this as its own search. We'll do the, the analysis separately. And now I can actually just go in here and download these packets or look at them individually. But they, I could download these packets and share them with the server admin. So let's go back to that last shop, uh, last forensic search I did for the workshop file. And we can take another look at things here. Um, we have expert analysis, so it's basically preloaded algorithms that detect issues on a packet trace. Um, for example, if we look at flows, this is gonna be all the, the flows that we've picked up in this trace and we can actually see events per flow. Um, for example, this HTTP conversation has 404 events. If I click on the flow, this little tray pops out and I get the flow visualizer, similar to what I shared with the voice video, um, but now we see the events specific to that one flow, right? So we can see there's some trouble with this particular conversation. We can see selective acts, we see retransmissions, that's indicative of loss. We're seeing non-responsive client, we're seeing low window and zero window. So another great feature when we're looking at TCP-based traffic is the flow visualizer. So right away, we can actually visualize delay and relative time in this ladder diagram so we can see client and server. So if there's any perceived delay, we're gonna see it here. Again, this is relative time. So it's very obvious when a request and a response came in. In addition to being able to visualize this flow, we can see the expert events over here in the right hand side, but we can actually get into the payload as well. So this is an HTTP conversation. So um, we can see that the, the initial setup is in plain text and you can see a get request. Now we see encrypted payload data. We can load certificates if you need to decrypt your payload, assuming that you have the certificates. Um, and another nice way to look at uh, this data is in the graph format. So we can actually look at the throughput of an individual flow over time. But what's really nice is being able to look into, you know, things like latency. You can see where towards the end of this flow, the latency hikes up. We can also see the TCP window. So we can see it both for a client and server. So right now we're looking at the server window, but if we click on the client window, we can see, whoa, there's a big bottom out event here. That lines up with that expert event we saw with the low window and then a zero window condition, right? So the 
receiving a buffer on the client is saying, I can't receive any more packets, right? And that's likely causing, you know, the, the problem that the user is experiencing in this particular case. And we can alert on that. We are also going to be sending that type of data in NetFlow. So a really powerful um, way to look at your individual conversations in our packet analyzer. And at any point in time, you want to look at, you know, those events or problematic packets, you can click this little ellipse and go to the packet. And now you're back into our standard uh, packet decoder. Same thing if you're looking at calls, right? If you're looking at a SIP call and you're looking at, you know, our voice video visualizer, you want to look at that SIP invite in its raw form. You can look at this invite message here, click the ellipse, go to the packet. Now we can see the packet. And if we scroll down here in the decoder, we can see the SIP protocol, we can see the SIP headers and the SDP. So the SDPs where actual media termination details are exchanged. Like here's how you talk to me on this port and uh, with this codec. So very powerful tool. Um, being able to, to search by calls is really powerful. Being able to sort your packet trace by applications. Maybe you're looking at a very specific application that you wanna see detailed information about. Um, for example, Microsoft SQL. So if I expand the SQL application, I can see the server and then all the associated clients, as well as those sessions. So now you see I have the standard workflow here with our flow visualizer. I can see there's uh, some expert events popping up here. We've got a SQL server slow response time. We've got a client error and a busy network. If we go to our flow visualizer within our SQL, we can actually look at the payload uh, given that this is unencrypted or we load the keys uh, and uh, the certificates and we can actually decrypt an encrypted SQL conversation, but we can see the queries, right? And that's really powerful. And then just looking at this slow response time, you can see in relative time between request and response. We provide a statistical summary for the whole trace. This is kind of a lot of information to look at, but it's accurate um, rolled up stats for everything in the trace file. What's really kind of cool is to be able to see, you know, what nodes on the trace are talking the most, you know, usually you'll, you'll, you'll have a pretty good idea of what's chatty and what's not. Um, being able to see these top two uh, talkers here or even looking at it from an application perspective, right? How much traffic is each application using? You can see the most of this file shares SIFS traffic, right? So we could actually um, select related packets and only look at our SIFS traffic. So a very nice way to slice and dice packet files. And last but not least, we can look at countries based on origin or destination, right? So. Um, these are all the different countries we picked up in the trace file we searched. You know, if we wanted to look at, you know, what traffic is going to or from or to or from a specific country like China, for example, we can select related packets based on the source country of China. Uh, or we could create a filter from it and just apply that to a search so we can find, you know, those uh, Chinese packets a little bit easier. All that being said, it looks like I'm about up on time. So I'm going to hand it back to Stacy and we can get started on a little bit of Q&A. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their participation in this webinar. And I look forward to having further discussions and maybe doing some more in-depth demos with you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, so we did have some questions that came through from the audience today, so I want to make sure we address those. The first question that we got was, does LiveNX work with other SD-WAN solutions besides Cisco? For example, Fortinet SD-WAN. Absolutely. Thanks, Stacey. Um, we do support Fortinet. We, right now, in our present uh, condition, we can do SNMP and Flow. With Fortinet, um, this quarter we're actually working on an API integration, so that will include some basic reporting for onboarding and tunnel performance, and then we have some more enhancements coming in in Q3. Um, in addition to Fortinet, of course, we do support others as well, such as Velocloud and uh, uh, 
Cloudgenix, also known as Prisma SD-WAN. Great. Um, another one that came through said, uh, you mentioned that you collect data from multiple sources. How long can LiveNX store that data? Awesome, good question. Um, so there's really no hard rules or limits on how much data you can store. Um, we do um, typically suggest storing, you know, raw flow data um, a little bit less than long-term flow data. So we have two different databases we'll store NetFlow into. One of them is raw flow and another is long-term. Um, the long-term, you can think of it kind of as compressed or aggregated data. And uh, most of our customers, um, keep raw flow for around 30 days, um, some longer, just depending on the retention requirements, but you can add uh, this capacity to your LiveNX system to store as much uh, long-term as you need. Great, uh, another one we have here, it says, I saw that LiveNX uses APIs to collect data. Does LiveNX have an API that could be leveraged to collect data? Another great question. Um, LiveNX does expose a REST-based API. Uh, so all of our, our front end and our, our thick client uh, leverages an API, and we do expose that same API to our customers. So you can leverage that for uh, running reports and automating some of the workflows within our tool set. Wonderful. Um, another question. Uh, it says, you said the LiveWire appliance can run in AWS. How do you get packets into the engine from the cloud? Another good question. Um, so with AWS, um, AWS supports port mirroring. So port mirroring can be leveraged to redirect uh, packets uh, from your VPC into the LiveWire um, instance. Now in GCP and Azure, I believe Azure has a, a port mirror feature that's currently unavailable. So they've taken that away for, for the time being. Uh, for those two environments, uh, Google and Azure, then you would leverage uh, a VTAP. So a VTAP would then redirect the traffic from your environments to the, the LiveWire engine. Thanks, Mike. Uh, another question, is the OmniPeak Analyzer part of LiveNX or is it an add-on? So, OmniPeak is part of the LiveWire solution. So LiveWire is separate from LiveNX. Um, it comes in the form of an appliance. We have a multi-tiers of appliances. We have like a smaller cigar box size for small branch locations, all, all the way up to a, a large data center um, appliance. Um, for every LiveWire purchase, OmniPeak does in, is included as well as the LiveNX device license. Um, however, you can purchase OmniPeak because it's a standalone protocol analyzer. It doesn't require LiveWire. You can also get that separately. So yes, it is a separate uh, product. Great, thank you so much, Mike. So today you've all heard about the challenges that network teams are facing when trying to analyze that network traffic. Um, now, how can we help? So hopefully you've gained some new insights into how some of Live Action Solutions can help work to enable network operations teams to monitor their networks and address some of those key challenges. Uh, if you need some additional um, information, you can get a better picture of how we can help deliver those successful network operations by taking another look at this webinar from today or share it with a colleague. Uh, you may also explore our past webinars for some additional insights. Those are located both on Bright Talk and on our website. You also may decide it's a great idea for you and your team to come together for a one-on-one, -on -one, more personalized demonstration session based around your current network and needs. So we can do that for both LiveNX or LiveWire or any of our other solutions. Additional resources are located in the attachments tab, including uh, other downloads for free trials that you can have out in your network or additional white papers and technical specs. So with that, I do wanna thank you all for joining today's webinar and ask that you keep an eye out for our next webinar, which will be this um, coming May on Friday, May 6th. And that one is titled Unmatched Network Visibility. So go ahead and make sure to pre-register for that so you don't miss out on what the latest trending topics in IT are. We look forward to seeing you then and hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining today.